Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show. I appreciate you coming back, uh, all the folks that are subscribers to the podcast, whether they're watching it on YouTube or listening to it on any of the popular podcast platforms out there. Appreciate you coming back. And if you're new, thanks for stopping by and taking the time to listen. Um, a lot of these podcasts you can watch. Uh, I'm putting them up on YouTube. Uh, for some people, it's easier to watch them that way, and that's cool. Uh, some people like to listen. That's what I do uh, when I'm traveling. Uh, when I'm sitting on a plane, I've got podcasts rolling. So I've got the traditional podcast. It's on all the popular platforms out there. If you ever get lost and just don't know where to find any of this stuff, just go to my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com, and there's links to the YouTube channel. There's links to the podcast. There's also links to the guide service that I run here in the Carolinas. And uh, there's also links to the fishing gear. People have questions about that. Everything's right there on DieterMelhornFishing.com. That's kind of the hub of everything I do. So that's kind of uh, the quick, easy way to find me. But uh, I've been absent for a little bit here. Some people have messaged me and said, hey, are you still doing a podcast? Yeah, I took a little bit of a break in the winter. Um, didn't really crank any out, so I apologize for that, uh, but just needed a little bit of time to get some stuff taken care of. I've actually been doing some stuff here in the studio. You can't really tell everything yet, but uh, there's some stuff changed around in here. We'll be seeing the effects of that later on this year on the YouTube channel, and uh, it will. Uh, that's taking up a little bit of time this winter, but this podcast is coming out early in the year, 2022, and things are starting to crank up. This is, uh, it's still cold. Uh, this is winter time, but as we go here into uh, the early, part, late part of winter, early part of spring, this is uh, when stuff, people start to get interested again in fishing. And um, what I'm going to talk about today, uh, it, it's still cold weather, and uh, it, it's a cold weather thing, and it's in one of what I consider one of the most interesting tournaments out there, and it's called the Ice Bowl. Uh, it takes place uh, on Kerr Lake, or Bugs Island, as it's called, which is on the North Carolina-Virginia border. Um, the cool thing about this lake, you may have heard of it, even if you're not from this area, from the Carolinas, uh, and that would be because uh, it's home to the world record blue catfish, 143 pounds that was caught several years ago up there. It's also home to the largest blue catfish that's ever been caught in a catfish tournament. It was caught by Dale Lowe. It was caught in the ice bowl, I think three or four years ago now. Uh, don't know exactly. Almost beat the world record. 141 pounds is the size of the fish Dale caught. And uh, I almost got to fish with him um, uh, this week. Uh, when I was there, uh, I jumped on the boat. I did not fish the tournament this year, but I went out with a couple of people and uh, did some pre-fishing. Joey Baird, uh, he is a guy up there who held the previous North Carolina record. He caught his fish out of Lake Gaston. Um, it was right around uh, 124, 22, somewhere right in there. Uh, he is a guide up there, Blue Persuasion Guide Service is the name of it. He's on Lake Gaston. Check him out. He took me out. Dale was supposed to be on the boat with me, uh, with us. Uh, he, uh, is, uh, he, he and Joey partnered together, together to fish the Ice Bowl tournament, but Dale got sidetracked somewhere, so Joey took me out, and big thanks to him, um, we caught fish, but the highlight of the trip was the cooking that he did. Um, I felt like I was on a cruise ship. We had actually uh, meat options for lunch. It was We could have burgers or we could have brats. He was willing to cook eat, either one. Uh, we had bacon-wrapped asparagus, which is just the most crazy thing I've ever ate on the boat. It was delicious. Uh, we had some beans. We had some grilled peppers. He had a Blackstone grill out on this boat. He's got an Angler's Quest pontoon boat, uh, which is a great pontoon boat, plenty of room, very luxurious boat, great fishing platform, but he had this thing really rigged up nice, and the eating was the best part. Uh, catching fish, I'm almost glad that the fishing died off so that we could eat, because that was really a highlight, so 
Big shout out to Joey. Check him out. Blue Persuasion Guide Service. He's out on there Lake Gaston. Um, but I fished with them pre-fishing. And uh, it was really nice conditions that day. The day of the tournament, however, things changed. They almost canceled the tournament. Um, or at least looking at postponing. And this is rare for the Ice Bowl because it's called the Ice Bowl for a reason. It's always cold. It's always in January. I think it's the third or fourth weekend of January. And this year it lived up to its name. Um, that the tournament's on a Saturday, the Friday night uh, before the tournament. A front came through, uh, was supposed to dump some snow. They actually got very little snow in that area. The fear was there was going to be one to three inches of snow. That didn't happen. But what did happen the next day uh, was really the bigger concern. And that was the wind. It was very, very windy on the lake. Uh, a northwest wind. There were some straight shoots on that lake that were very long and some really sloppy water. Um, there were solid three-footers in some places. Uh, I was lucky. That day, I rode along and filmed uh, with the guys from Catfish, K-A-T-F-I-S-H. Uh, and... We cheated a little bit in the boat that we were in. We were in a very large Hughes craft, deep V, probably 24 feet long, big cabin. The, the waves in the water were not a concern for us. But some smaller craft boats out there, a whole different story. Um, and it was cold. It never got above 33 degrees that day. Uh, really, really bad conditions. Uh, the, the tournament lived up to its name. So here's the deal with the tournament. It's done very, uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about, because I think they do some things really, really good. We're going to talk about the really, really good stuff, and we're going to talk about, about the bad stuff, too. I always do. Uh, the tournament uh, takes place on Kerr Lake, Bugs Island. It's a uh, very large lake. Part of it is in North Carolina. There is a creek arm that is in North Carolina. Most of it is in Virginia. And this started out uh, when they did this tournament, I don't know, it's probably been at least 10 years ago, as a battle on the border. It was a battle between North Carolina anglers and uh, Virginia anglers. Basically, you know, a little who's the best kind of thing. They created a plaque, which is really cool. And it was basically they take so many of the fish from North Carolina, so many of the fish from Virginia, weigh them, see who comes out to winter. Now, for years and years, Virginia won this thing every year. Uh, me being a North Carolina angler, I didn't like that. Now, I'm proud to say that the first time I fished the ice bowl uh, was fishing with Mike Chanley. Uh, I don't know, that's been several years ago. Uh, North Carolina won the Ice Bowl that year for the first time. Uh, I like to think I contributed to that, even though we didn't place anywhere near the top. Uh, it was the first year that North Carolina won it. So that's kind of part of the Ice Bowl that is really cool. It's kind of this battle on the border between Virginia and North Carolina. The other cool thing is it's a one-fish tournament. Uh, it, it's one big fish is all you bring to the scale. I've always been a big supporter and proponent of uh, one fish tournaments. I like them because they don't, um, you're not putting a lot of fish in a live well. You're not putting a lot of stress on the fish. You don't need a super duper massive live well uh, or as big. Now, I will say this, Kerr Lake's the anomaly. You need as big a live well as you can get because as I said earlier, uh, there had been some big, big fish caught and this tournament had a big, big fish caught. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but the 141 pounder that Dale Lowe caught was just, I mean, like I said, its it, it was nearly a world record. Uh, they're big fish there. But uh, I like the one fish format. I think it's very cool. There's no measuring. There's no undersize. There's none of that stuff to deal with. It's all about catching one big fish. And I'll tell you this, it changes the way people fish. Uh, I spoke with both of these guys that I went out with, uh, both very experienced tournament anglers, very experienced fishermen, and their strategy is totally different um, fishing that way than trying to catch two or three fish. They approach it totally different. Uh, there's a lot more looking to try to target a really, really big fish. And um, it's just a different strategy than fishing a multiple 
fish tournament. Now, some people say that anybody can get lucky and catch one good fish, or it takes more skill to catch multiple fish. And I, I've said for years that when you bring uh, as many anglers together as they did in this tournament, I think this year at last count, there were 125 boats in it. It's been as high as 170. Uh, when you have that many good anglers, uh, it's not about skill uh, because there's so many anglers at the same skill level. It's all about luck at that point that determines the winner from the loser, uh, and, you know, loser being second place. And it, it really comes down to luck playing the part with that many skilled anglers in the mix. If you want to make a tournament just totally about skill, make it one rod, take away the sonar unit, don't let them pre-fish. That becomes a lot more skill. Still luck plays a part uh, regardless, but uh, it really eliminates that. But I like the one fish format. It's really cool. Um, this year, the big fish was a big one. I think the second biggest fish that's ever been weighed in. Um, the 141 is going to be hard to beat. This one was a 100, let me make sure my notes are right here, 112 pounds. Bill Sutton caught it. Uh, a great fish. I've got a video up uh, on my channel here on YouTube. It's also on Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook and also on TikTok. I'm on TikTok, believe it or not. Dieter Melhorn on there. There's a video. Uh, I got back just in time to see this fish being released, and uh, they were wheeling it down in a big cart, got it into the water, swam off great, in great shape. Uh, I've never seen a fish that big before, catfish that big. Uh, I, my biggest is 72 pounds, and, uh, you know, seeing a fish this size it, it, in person, it's really stupid, odd, crazy, big, and just how grotesquely large the thing is. The video doesn't do it justice, I'll be honest. I was just shooting out with a GoPro camera. Um, but a fish that size is crazy. It's just, it's, it's so big in the proportions, the, the girth, uh, the size of the head. The, it's just, it's an amazing fish. But yeah, he caught a great fish, ended up winning the tournament with that fish. Now, you may think to yourself, man, there's fish behind every rock on Kerr Lake that are this size. Well, second place was 59 pounds. And you see how that's almost half the weight of the winning fish. And it goes to third place, it drops off to 46 pounds. There was a ton of fish uh, in the 30 pound range, and then a lot of them, it fell off after there, uh, after that. Uh, so like a lot of these places that have big fish, um, they're there, but they're not behind every rock. You're not gonna catch a ton of 70, 80, 90 pound fish, uh, especially in these conditions. Like I said, this was horrendous fishing conditions. Uh, a lot of boats could not stay anchored because of the wind. Uh, it was around 15 to 20 sustained uh, with some gusts up to around 30 miles an hour. So it was very tough fishing. Even the guys who were drifting, uh, you had to know what you were doing to fish in those conditions. So uh, it's a it, it was a very interesting tournament, just all the conditions out there we're dealing with. If you ever get a chance to go fish Carl Lake, I think you will like it. Um, it's toward the eastern part, uh, northeastern part of North Carolina, southeastern part of Virginia. Uh, it's not that much of a, it's not a really built up lake. Um, there's a lot of just, tree line, you know, shore on this lake. Uh, it's big, it's a very large lake, uh, relatively deep, uh, a lot of steep drops, a lot of rock, uh, a lot of rock on the bottom in a lot of these places. Uh, it's known obviously now for world-class blue catfish, also known as a striper fishery, a lot of stripers in the lake. Uh, it is a stocked lake and uh, also known as a big bass fishing lake and crappie. It, it's a really diverse lake, kind of away from everything. It's a little bit of a drive to get there. It's not some place that is close to a big municipality. That may be what protects it and keeps the fishing pressure down on it, but the secret's out now that there's some big fish in there. And uh, the Ice Bowl is a great, great tournament. Uh, interesting thing about it, it had been... Uh, uh, done for years from the state park in Clarksville, Virginia. And uh, a couple of years ago, there was a change with, I think, some management at the state park. 
and they didn't want the tournament there because it brings in a huge crowd. Uh, the tournament left, went to another boat ramp further down the lake, and uh, the people of Clarksville were upset. They were up in arms. They were, because this brings in a lot of money, hundreds of people every year coming in, staying in hotels, eating in restaurants, you know, hitting the local gas stations, the stores, the pizza joints, and uh, the people of Clarksville got the tournament moved back to the state park. So that was a, a cool thing there, the people of the community showing the support for this tournament. Uh, and again, it's in January. It's cold when they have this tournament. And, uh, you know, some years you get lucky and the weather's decent, but the years I've been there, it's always been a concern about ice on the boat ramp, boat ramps icing up. This year we almost had some snow. So uh, if you ever get a chance to fish the tournament, uh, I say go do it. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a low entry fee. I think it's only 120 bucks to enter the tournament. It's really about bragging rights more than it is making money. If you're somebody who's trying to make a whole bunch of money uh, out there off of fishing a tournament, this one is, is not up your alley. And I, uh, honestly, though, that's the thing I like about it. This is a, a, it's a very pure fishing tournament in the sense that it's about fishing. Uh, it, it's about the camaraderie. It's about the, uh, you know, the bragging rights between two states. It's about catching one fish. Uh, there's a lot of good, good stuff about this tournament. I love it. I try to get up there every year when I can. Would have taken my boat and fished it this year. I was concerned about the snow, though. Uh, my son had something come up. He couldn't go. Some other people I was going to try to go with could not go fish the tournament. I was kind of scared to do it by myself with having to deal with if we got snow on the ground, an issue with the trailer, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm going to try to get back up there next year and try to fish it because I love fishing up there. I love the area. It's a, um, it's a very cool lake, and it's a, a fun way that this tournament is done. And uh, if you ever get a chance to go up there and fish it, I say go do it. Uh, the only bad thing I could come up with uh, out of everything on this tournament is uh, if there was a way they could keep fish in the live wells right up until they're being weighed. Some of the bigger tournaments, uh, like the uh, some of these uh, Mississippi River Monsters, the ones on Wheeler, some of these bigger tournaments, have got a good process to where you can drive the trailer right up to the stage, fish comes out of the live wheel, goes into scale, goes back into the live wheel, you go release it. They're not able to do that there. And the tough part is doing it where they do it at the state park, with where they're able to get set up. The logistics of doing that is tough. And I understand that. But the good thing is, it being cold, uh, colder weather, uh, the fish uh, with a slower metabolism uh, can stand being out of the water longer. Obviously, we as anglers need to keep those fish in the water, keep those gills wet, keep fresh water coming across them, oxygenated water as long as we can. Uh, but, you know, one of these deals is, or, you know, that's kind of the... That's kind of the constraints of the situation they got going there. So if they could fix that a little bit, I think uh, it's about as good a tournament as it gets. And uh, I, to my knowledge, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's getting rich off this tournament either. A lot of the bigger tournaments now, people are making money. I have no problem with that. I think anybody who puts on a big tournament of this size needs to be making some kind of money for doing it because there is a lot that goes into it. Uh, there is a lot of work, especially some of these bigger tournaments. You start dealing with staging and PA systems and, you know, the people you need to make all this stuff happen. It takes money. I have no problem with that. I don't know how much money is actually being made on this tournament now. There are some good sponsors. Folks here at Catfish, uh, the rods over my shoulder here from Catch the Fever. They're a major sponsor there. Catch the Fever, uh, Caleb, uh, has been on board with that tournament series for a long time, supporting it. And... Uh, you know, the, those kind of people there that are backing this kind of stuff, they realize that this is a real just grassroots type tournament. And, uh, you know, they've been very supportive of it since the beginning. So I like it. Uh, I like the tournament series. Uh, I, I hope it keeps going. I, there's no reason it shouldn't. And I'm going to try to get up there and fish it next year. Uh, I'm already blocking that date off on my schedule because it's it's a fun place. I'm going to try to get up to Kerr Lake some this year and fish. Um, uh, probably toward the springtime because it's just a nice, nice fishery. Uh, you can drift the lake. You can anchor. There's rivers that dump into it if you like river fishing. So 
a lot of good points, a lot of good points about the lake. And uh, I salute the guys at the Ice Bowl for the, you know, what they did with that tournament. Great series. If you get a chance, check it out. I'm going to have some videos out uh, on my YouTube channel from there. Check out the video uh, of the big fish being released. Uh, that's a big, big fish. Uh, it's a little short that's on my Dieter Melhorn Fishing Facebook page, YouTube channel. And Dieter Melhorn on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Don't worry. I won't be doing any dancing uh, or anything like that. So, well, I don't know. I may dance with the catfish. But anyway, that's it for now, folks. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No. no do, do that one first and then that one. Uh, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.